Good morning, brethren, sisters, dear saints of the Church of God, which is the Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Hello. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and um, read along with me in the scriptures we'll be considering today. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God, the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration, Word of God, the authorized version of the Scriptures. Please, read along with me. Keep an eye on me. I make mistakes. Okay? All right? The Scripture is infallible. I'm fallible. Okay? All right? Be a Berean. Be a Berean. Search the Scriptures daily whether these things were so. And the Bereans are a great example of what we're going to be addressing. They wanted truth. They wanted to align themselves with that truth and were willing for that truth to form them. You know, you read in Acts chapter 2, you know, men and brethren, what shall we do? Right? Right? And then in Acts, uh, what is that? Um, the Philippian jailer who had godly sorrow, you filth free gracer, had godly sorrow, okay? That's why Paul didn't have to say anything about repentance uh, because he already had godly sorrow, not worldly sorrow. If he had worldly sorrow, you filth, he would have killed himself, okay? So, anyway, the Philippian jailer, what must I do to be saved? See, the people in Acts 2, what, man, brethren, what shall we do? Philippian jailer, who had godly sorrow, um, we've proved that before, easy to prove that. It's like, what must I do to be saved? They asked questions because they wanted truth. The Bereans wanted truth. They wanted truth. And when you truly want truth, Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. You will ask for that truth in order that that truth may change you. But see, who's someone who doesn't want truth. Someone who wants to be disputatious and justify themselves. I saw a video clip. I, I don't know who the dude was, and I don't care, okay? Uh, this thing about debate, you know, and you see these stupid free gracers in their live streams do this kind of stuff all the time. Come into the studio. They always use StreamYard or whatever. Come into the studio and debate and defend, my, defend your position. It's like, what? Why? Why? I'm not going to yoke myself up with a devil. That's stupid. And what do they do? It's like Eric Lionheart when, um, uh, I forget what video it was. Um, I, I, the Lord had me to rebuke that filth. And he, he made a comment. It's like, why don't you come and debate me? It's like, <laughs> did you watch the video? I'm not going to debate an idiot like you. And then what did he do? He goes to the schoolyard. You won't debate me because you know you're wrong and you can't beat me. Nah, 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 nah. I wish I didn't have deleted the comment could have seen it but that's what he did and he's I think he's older than I am I've seen debates I've seen of course before we all knew that Ken Helvin was Jesuit um, I've seen Ken Helvin debate debates I even saw that one debate with Ruckman and that one Catholic guy that was bad I I, I actually felt bad for that Catholic because Ruckman whooped his rear end but but now did you catch that this thing about debate, and debate is not going to be our topic, okay? But did you catch that? Did you catch that? Catch what? Ken Helvin, when he did debates, and then even in one of his older, you know, dinosaur whatever things that he did, he's like, you know, I, I, I've done all these debates, and I slaughter them because they are wrong, and I am right. He's a Jesuit, by the way. Debate... What does debate cause? You watch Ruckman and that Catholic? Ruckman annihilates that guy. Even that Catholic, it was just 
that was embarrassing. If I if I were a Catholic and I saw that, I'd be like, "Oh, dude, you need you you need to get out of there." But well, what is the fruit of a debate? Pride. It's pride. I've heard Ruckman say, oh, I'll beat that guy. And, of course, Ken Helvin, you know, not saved, of course. You know, I slaughter them. What fruit comes from debate? Now, you could argue there might be a Paul in the mix there. You could argue that. That's sketchy. But, okay, okay I will give that. I will give you that. There may be a Paul there. There may be a Paul there. I, what I'm getting at, Paul, you know, saw the stoning of Stephen, and then in Acts 13, he kind of went on the same shoe where he, he saw Stephen, you know, rebuke the, the Pharisees and stuff. And when uh, Stephen's like, you stiff-necked and uncircumcised and heart and ears and stuff, like Paul saw all that. And, of course, that was something that he kind of also did in Acts 13. I'll give you that. But, see, the probability of that nowadays is so small. The overall fruit of debate is pride. Because, someone, because number one, all it is is a, a waving contest. I'm smarter than you. I could use bigger words than you. And, they, they, and it's, it's disgusting. And the fruit of it, the, the, you know, Ruckman, I beat that guy, and he sure did. Helvin, oh, uh, yeah, I trounce him, and okay, whatever. Pride. Pride is the result of debate. You, you can, you know, to defend yourself, you little heretics, you can go ahead, well, there may be a Paul there. But then again, most of you guys who inv uh, get involved in this debate nonsense, you ain't saved anyway. Okay? So, debate. Ugh. Ugh. But I saw this one video of this one Christian dude. And he was on one of these Jesuit college campuses. They're all run by Jesuits anyway. Any college in America is a Jesuit college. Okay? Doesn't have to have the name up there. The Jesuit order controls the educational system in America. Period! So he was on one of these Jesuit campuses answering questions from atheists. And number one, he, he wasn't, he didn't have a set of scriptures. And besides, he was, he was trying to quote a Bible. But the fruit of it, the fruit of it, these atheists coming up and asking this Christian dude these questions, and he did his best to answer. But there was, you know, roundabout kind of stuff where nothing got proved, except he, through the video, was made to look pretty good. And a Christian watches ass like, hey, there you go. Pride. Pride. And one of the things that sparked this today, I know we haven't gotten to the scriptures yet, uh, will be in the start in 1 Timothy chapter 1 through 7. 1 Timothy 1, 1 through 7. Go ahead and pause and read it right now if you want. But um, there was a kid that asked this guy, and this is something that you and I saints run into quite a lot. You can't prove to me your God exists. You can't prove anything to me. There is no such thing as an atheist. There, there's, there's no... There, dude, you're not an atheist! <laughs> you're not! Okay? An atheist is someone who doesn't believe in a deity. Dude, you are your own God. You are, you, the, the atheist will tell you, I decide what is right and wrong. You are your own God. Okay, you, I don't think I'm God. Uh, well, you might want to deceive yourself. Well, I'm not a God, but no. But see, only God knows what is truly right and what is truly wrong. You coming around saying that you know better than God and that you are the captain of your own destiny, you're acting as your own God. Atheists do not exist. Okay? But you, you run into a guy like, well, you can't prove this to me. You can't prove this. And the one Christian dude bantered, well, you first proved it. Got involved in the, the trap. And the one kid, it's like, you're just throwing my, my argument back at me. 
And he was right. Because the Christian dude, he did. He just, you first proved to me this, this, and this. And then the one kid's like, what? You're just throwing my argument back at me. Okay? That's a tactic, a maneuver that is taught in the thing of debate. Have you ever looked into the actual science of debate? You can find it. Okay? That's actually a tactic that, uh, that you would get uh, trained in from a Jesuit college. You can't prove to me. Well, you're right. I can't. But see, God can through the scripture. And the question always is, and saints, you'll find this out pretty quick, whether these people want truth or not. It's like when I talked to the two sodomite kids. Okay, That kid asked me with a dejected face, he knew. He wanted to hear the truth. Now, whatever happened to them kids, whatever, whatever. But the point was, that kid wanted to hear the response from Scripture. Of course, in Romans chapter 1. Okay? He wanted to hear it. Now, what he did with that truth, then between him and the Lord. But he wanted to hear it. Okay? Most of the people that we are going to encounter, number one, don't want to hear it nowadays, and number two, will do whatever they can to justify themselves. And in Timothy, Paul warns Timothy to be mindful of this. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 7. We don't have to answer everybody's question. We've talked about this before. But we don't have to answer all their questions. And see, pride gets involved because the enemy will try to draw you out to play their game. And how they do it, fleshly means. But we'll get into that. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 1 under verse 7. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior, with seven letters, and... Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. Unto Timothy, mine own, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies. Fables and endless genealogies. You ever witnessed to the Hebraic Jews before? Okay. Some of these guys can trace their lineage, you know, or at least try to, from the modern day today <laughs> onto the 12 tribes of Israel and Genesis. Okay? They, there are some that can do that. It, it, it is. It is quite impressive. You just sit there and when you, can, you hear one of these guys rattle off their genealogy. It's like, wow, you put a lot of time into that. <laughs> Imagine if you put that kind of effort into studying the scriptures and finding out that the one that you hate was actually God, your father, the Mashiach. Anyway, neither, giving, neither give heed to fables. God loves you unconditionally, even though you reject him. <laughs> Got to go to Christ's church. And do what? Hey, here's a cookie. Just believe and receive. Right? Fables. Fables. Which minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in faith, so do. Questions. There ain't nothing wrong with asking a question. But if you're asking a question to justify self, 
or as most often than not, asking a question just to be disputatious. Oh, and you get a lot from that from these filth free gracers. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> like, dude, I've answered your question. I want to give them a video. Then what do they do? They repackage the same question and then give it to you in a different wrapper. Like, dude, I heard that that's been answered. You don't want to hear it. You can't prove to me. You're right. I can't prove nothing to you. I wish, you know that one, I can't, I don't know what his name was, kind of a lanky guy, Look, it reminded me of uh, Woody Allen, you know, black hair and stuff like that, doesn't have a, didn't even have a Bible on him, I mean, come on, come on, he's, he's in front of all these kids and whatnot, but like I said, he reminded me of Woody Allen, but the one kid is like, you can't prove anything to me, I would have, I would have had a little bit more respect for that Christian dude, it's like, you're right, I can't. You're right. I can't prove anything to you. God can prove something to you. Through the scripture, which the dude wasn't using. The dude wasn't using. Okay, if you're... Okay, don't debate. It's a waste of time. However, if you're going to debate, what's the weapon you're going to use? But yet... That guy wasn't, I mean, he, he, he tried to quote a Bible, not the scripture. But, it's like, dude, okay, these kids are asking you questions. Well, what's your authority? Where, why, where was the sword? <laughs> where was it? And I'll ask if you this dude's uh, clips. It's just the shorts. I didn't watch a whole, I, I don't even know the guy's name. But I watched, the, the guy didn't even have a Bible on him. And yet, these kids are asking him questions, and he's just going off of his memory. It's like, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Okay? That, that, you see, pride. Pride. It makes him look good because he's rattling it all off. Hey, I can't remember that kind of stuff. Here, let's, let's find out together. Come, let's reason together, you and I. How are we going to do that? Do the scriptures. Do the scriptures. Brother, that, that's why I'm always saying to you, you know, I know some people get uncomfortable with it. I get that, okay? But, you know, I know, you, and you probably got that big one that's all marked up, praise the Lord. Take it with you. I, I, it might not fit in your jacket, but I take, take a bag or something, dude. You know, and then, and, and, you know, then it's like, here, get shoulder to shoulder. Here, see this? See that? Read it with them. Show it to them. Okay? But there again, the one kid was like, you can't prove to me anything. And then one guy, well, you first proved to me. You got you got, got sucked into that trap. End it with a different way. How? You're right. I can't prove anything to you. If that dude would have said that to that kid... Then he would have opened a whole different door. But see, he wasn't using the scriptures. Wasn't using the scriptures. Didn't even have a Bible on him. But see, and you can't prove anything to me. You're right. I can't prove anything to you. But see, this, the authorized version, the perfect and errant, given by inspiration, word of God, the Lord through this can prove to you anything you want. You want. Do you want the truth? What if I told you the God who is, and this, and this is a good one. I've done this. It's out of my kids. What if I told you the God who is hates sodomy? And these people are being deceived. Well, love is love. God's not angry at God loves you unconditionally. You're a sodomite. God hates it. What if I told you the God who is hates that. What if I told you the God who is, who is, hates every false way? What if I told you the God who is has a requirement? Several of them, actually. Oh! <gasps> and then you got these idiot free gracers with the, the backloading works into salvation nonsense that they come up with. 
It's like, oh, wow, yeah, and you're, you're the intelligent ones, huh? And that's where they get into repentance is a work. Contrition is a work. Okay, calling on the name of the Lord is a work. <laughs> it's not funny. But see, that's a justification of self of someone who doesn't want the truth. That dude would have said to that kid, you're right, I can't prove anything to you. And he couldn't. Number one, he didn't have, he didn't even have a Bible on him. And number two, I'm sure he was, uh, uh, I think he was. I think there were a couple videos of him trying to defend the, the, the Trinity. Woo! <laughs> Dude, you're Trinitarian. You don't have the real God. You got the wrong one. Okay, but anyway. Anyway. See, fables, genealogies, what do they minister? Questions. There's nothing wrong with asking a question. Do you ask your question because you want to know truth? Or are you trying to defend yourself or just start something? Hmm? You know, brethren ask questions all the time. Praise the Lord. I also get a lot of questions to people who don't want to hear it. Like just being disputatious. Trying to catch something in me or something weird like that. Okay? We don't have to answer every question. But see, what do they do? You can't answer it. Na, 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 na. Like that little 12 year old on a playground. Like Eric Lionheart did to me in the comments. Even, even the sweetheart does stuff like that. The they all do that kind of stuff. Because they're children of the devil. They're little 12 year olds. You can't, you're afraid to debate me because you know I'd win. Uh, pride, anybody? pride. And people to defend this, you know, going to colleges and talking to atheists and kids, they like to point to, well, Paul went to the markets in, Act, in the book of Acts and spake with anyone who would speak with him. Okay? There is a place for that. I go, I go up town to the square, hand out tracts, and yes, I do talk to people, but you know what I ain't going to do? I'm not going to get involved in a debate. And if someone <laughs> starts, and I've, I've encountered that tons of times. It's like, you can't prove that. You can't prove to me one thing you're saying. You're right, I can't. Pull up the sword. But the Lord through this can. You want to hear it? Huh? huh? No? Okay, fine. Want to track? No? Okay. I see you. I got, I got other stuff to do. Leave him alone. But see, they, through the flesh, pride. You can't answer it. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> like I told Eric Lionheart in the comment, which I did delete, unfortunately, or else you'd see it. It's like, uh, what, what are you going to do next? Liar, liar, pants on fire? <laughs> like a little 12-year-old, huh? Let's finish this. Now, the end of the commandment is charity, self-sacrifice, out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned, from which some having swerved have turned aside, turned aside onto vain jangling, like jangling chains in, or chain, um, change in your pockets. Jangling, okay? If I have that wrong about jangling, one of you... <laughs> I love you. Well, correct me on that. Desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. I, I, I've encountered lost Gen Z or whatever these progressive woke idiots, children, who brought up to me about the oldest and best. And they, they don't even claim to be a Christian. And I, I don't. And when you have, you know, I, that might be an American thing with the lovely little darlings that we have here in America. But so if you, come on. I, I just, are you serious, kid? 
Are you, 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 you don't, even in that, you don't even know what you're talking about. You're just parroting something. Okay, go. go. Okay, you hear? You want to track? Okay. You want to you learn? Want no? Okay. Go, 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 go run along, huff your air freshener, or put on your little dog collar, whatever you got to do. Just go, okay? Brad, that's not Christian. Like, you're right, it's not. You're right, I'm not a Christian. We give them a seed by our testimony, by our witness. They don't want to have faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. They don't want to hear that. It's not up to you and I to try to dig to force that seed into the ground. Sometimes, brethren, sometimes, brethren, it hurts. Oh, it hurts. Especially when it's someone that you want, you want to see saved. There comes time you got to walk away. Got a video on that. It'll be in the description box. 2 Timothy 2, 2 Timothy 2, 22 on to 23. Flee also youthful lusts. Like I said, like I said, you encounter someone who's being disputatious, don't want to hear the truth like the free grace or idiots, what do they do? We, I'm not, I'm not going to be debating with anybody. Okay, no, I'm not going to do a live stream with anybody. And what do they do? You're afraid. You're a coward. You know I would. Youthful lust. Kids. Children. Little baby boys. Yeah, yeah, little 12-year-olds. Buying on a merry-go-round in the schoolyard. Okay, that's what these people do. They do. They do. You know, Atheists like that idiot Dade Murphy. Okay, I made many a reference. I give that guy respect for this. The guy's an idiot. He's not stupid. He's an idiot. Willfully ignorant. So yeah, I guess he's stupid. But he's an intelligent guy. He came flat out and said, I don't want Jesus. Okay? Now granted, he spends a lot of time picking on Christianity. Good for him. Uh, pick on Christianity all day. I do. <laughs> because it's not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. But that man has has been has heard, has been told of the Jesus who is. He doesn't want it. And he's even said that. You know what you're dealing with then. Okay? <laughs> you're going to, hey Dave, you see me? You are going to hell. So roll up another one and enjoy your life, pal, because this is the best you're going to have, okay? And you'll remember that when you're screaming in anguish, in terror and horror, and in suffering in hell, okay? You will. But at least he said, I don't want it, okay? He'll ask questions to try to start stuff, okay? And he asks people who are not really in <laughs> up to things, like, the, he asked this one kid, I did, I did a video on it, uh, where he asked this one brainless, mindless, dopey kid, and I'm being polite. I saw that kid's videos that he does. The kid, is, ugh. it's like, dude, and I, I commented on one of his videos. It's like, kid, you, you need to stop making videos like this, okay? You're, you're embarrassing yourself and the Lord that you claim that you serve. Uh, anyway. Yeah, he goes after people who can't really answer his questions anyway. Okay? So, anyway. But, point is, point. He admits it. He admits it. I don't want your Jesus. I don't want the Jesus who is. I can respect someone for that, that they're at least up front to tell you that. So you don't waste, it's like, don't waste your time. I'm not going to waste my time on a guy like that. You don't want it? Fine. Have fun storing the castle. Roll up another one. God loves you. Then go away. Go away. But see, when you encounter the Christian, like the, these idiot free gracers, Catholics, okay, Catholics too, all right, well, you're, you're just afraid. You know I'd win. You know I'd win. 
You know I beat you. Pride. Flee also youthful lusts. But follow righteousness, faith, charity, self-sacrifice, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. What makes the heart pure? You? Huh? The heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. You trust in your own heart, you're a fool. And the fool says in his heart, there is no God. What is the purity that is of the heart? The Lord Jesus Christ. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. No, boy, get all kinds of questions like that. Strifes. And again, the thing on youthful lusts, okay, these children of the devil, uh, Ecclesiastes 11, Ecclesiastes 11, 9 and 10. Ecclesiastes 11, 9 and 10. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth. You go, girl. And let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth. And walk in the ways of thine heart. Because God knows your heart. Yeah. And in the sight of thine eyes, eye candy, but know thou, this is what you guys got to remember. I'm not talking to saints right now. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee in judgment. For every one of us will give an account of himself to God. We the saved at the judgment seat of Christ. You the lost <laughs> and everybody else. Eventually at the great white throne. Okay. Therefore. Remove sorrow away from thy heart. Remo therefore remove sorrow away from thy heart. And put away evil from thy flesh. For childhood and youth are vanity vanity empty empty vanity of vanities all is vanity all of this is vanity first corinthians 13 9 on to 11 childhood and youth and va are vanity you know, again, I, I have to go back to that imbecile uh, Eric Lionheart and his comment. It's like, okay, I think the guy's older than me. He looks older than I do, at least, maybe in his 60s or 70s. And yet, you're afraid to debate me. You know, I, I've, the Canadian talk show host has done that. The bloke has done that, but he, he kind of he's kind of uh, knowing a little better. Uh, all the free gracer guys like praise that he isn't, and all those idiots do the same thing. You know, na, 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 na. little child, little children, little kids. First Corinthians thirteen nine unto eleven, for we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. As a child. Child of what? Child of the devil. We're children of God. Children of God and children of the devil. Hmm. 1 John uh, 4, verse 6. 1 John 4, verse 6. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the lowercase s spirit of truth and the lowercase s spirit of error. Because the spirit of error has at its base what? The world flesh. Which Christianity is all about. Titus 1. Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1. 
verses 10 on to verse 16. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. Many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers. A lot of Christians. You know, brethren, as most of you saints have figured out, the ones that we have the most, that are the greatest enemies to the Lord Jesus Christ, are not the atheist. They're not even the Muslim. They're the Catholics, the Free Gracers, the Pentecostals, the Episcopalians, the Presbyterians, a lot of the Baptists. The enemy of Christ is that which is called Christianity. And oh, I forgot a denomination. King James Bible believe in Christianity. Those denominations of the divided body of Christianity, as if you haven't figured out, they are the one. There are some atheists. Oh, now, there are atheists who like that one kid. You can't prove to me anything. You're right, I can't. You're right, I can't. And even if I could, which I can't, I, it's the Lord through the scriptures does the proving, um, you don't want it anyway. So go away. But there are some that want to hear it and will listen and will receive it. What they what happens with that when they receive that truth, that's between them and the Lord. But there are some that still, even to this day, who will hear. Who want to hear. Okay? But the greatest enemy to the faith that was once delivered on to the saints is Christianity. Especially the closer we get to the redemption of the purchased possession. And you're right, brother. You're right. We're bought. We're bought and paid for. We're not yet redeemed. You're right. That was good. You ought to share that in your community section. That's just me. Okay? Verse 11. Whose mouths must be stopped. Who subvert whole houses teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. For money. Yeah, you want the complete course? You got to buy this video. You want to know more? Buy the book. What did you, we, we have a, we have the book. Okay. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, The Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. Oh, you mean a kindred, a specific kindred? was labeled with liars, evil beasts, slow bellies? Oh. Oh, we won't get into that one, will we? This witness is true. <laughs> Wherefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables, comma, and... Commandments of men that turn from the truth onto the pure. All things are pure. Out of a pure heart. What is the purity of the heart of a saint? Jesus Christ. My heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. And my heart has problems. <laughs> but the purity of my heart is the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. When you think you are you are own God and standard, there is no room <laughs> For two, okay? There is no room for two. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him. And, 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 and just, just hold your place here because this is, because uh, again, the way these guys operate, they strain at a gnat and they swallow the, and they want you to swallow the camel, okay? 
You see this with the free gracer when it comes to Romans 10, 14. They'll focus on the word believe and just ignore the entire context of 14 on to verse 17 in Romans 10 that's talking about those of us who are called to do this, okay? Anyway, Ephesians 2, verse 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, not for salvation, okay? But we are ambassadors for Christ, okay? Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. But in works they deny him. In works they deny him. Like how? Profanity out of the mouth. Um, uh, showing things that they shouldn't. Talking about things that they shouldn't. Justifying sin. That kind of thing. And you're saved. No, you're not. Being a bondable and disobedient and unto every good work. Reprobate. You know? You know, if these guys really wanted to deceive people, well, they can get away with it nowadays because of the ignorance of people generally about Scripture. But if these guys wanted to really deceive people more efficiently, they could at least try to clean up their mouth. But they don't. Because they can get away with it today because of what Christianity, the deplorable, disgusting thing that Christianity is. Verse 15 again. Unto the pure all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. They believe in themselves. They are their own God. And if they claim to believe on God, a God I should say, they're usually a Trinitarian. Here we go again. Dude, if you're a Trinitarian, you don't have the right God. Revelation 21, verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and, um, and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars, Catholics, free gracers, Calvinists, Pentecostals, a lot of Baptists, Okay. Shall have their part in the lake of fire which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And remember, that's not so annihilationism. Hell is eternal. Hell is eternal. The lake of fire is eternal. Okay. Revelation 22, just one verse, verse 15. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth, loveth and maketh a lie. Ye shall be as gods. That's the ultimate lie of all time. Yea, hath God said, ye shall be his gods. The ultimate lies, I should say, of all time. You're the captain of your own soul. You, you decide what is right or wrong. And see, that produces pride. And pride will produce in you to debate publicly so you could have bragging rights like Kent Helvin, even like um, uh, uh, the, the uh, Pete Ruckman, okay? And that, 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 that Jesuit James White would... Mm, mm. Luke 7. Luke 7. And see, that kind of mentality produces what? Pride. Luke 7. Luke 7. 36 on 39. One and one of the Pharisees desired him, who Jesus, that he would eat with him. Jesus is popular, well known, and here's a Pharisee who, number one, did not believe that Jesus is the Mashiach, that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, the promised Mashiach, the Messiah, the everlasting Father. He didn't believe that. Why did he want Jesus to die with him? For everyone to see, look at how righteous I am. I'm, 
entertaining this guy. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. Behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, which was a sinner. Hmm. When she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment. Now it's interesting to point out that the Pharisee, this woman who was noted right there as a sinner, but yet she had free reign to come into the house of the Pharisee. Did the Pharisee take care for her? No. We're going to prove that. But why would he do that? To show how holy and righteous he was by allowing these sinners to come in because he was having pity on them. And like today with the Christians, you know, uh, someone who is in sin, uh, uh, I don't live there anymore, great, great video by Alexander B. Hartley. Um, okay. The Christian, to these, these wicked Christians, when they're in blatant, brazen sin, they're like, that's when you need to come to church. That's when you need us. No, Scripture tells you, you get out of here. Okay, a, a similar principle with the result of, look at how pious we are. We're Christians. We're not judging you. God loves you. And stood at his feet behind him weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet and anointed them with ointment. Now, now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, here's a very revealing trait of this Pharisee. Here, and also for our instruction in righteousness, here's a very revealing thing of Christianity, that it's obscene. Now when the Pharisee, which had bidden him, saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, stop, stop. Good master, what, my, what good thing should I do to inherit eternal life? Good master, if this man were a prophet, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. The Lord stopped. Good master, if, the, if he were a prophet, the rich young ruler was standing before God the Father, the Mashiach, Jesus Christ, is come in the flesh. Okay, God manifest in the flesh. Father. But he only saw a good master. This dude... If he were a prophet, he didn't even believe he was a prophet. Very revealing. Would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. Now, in verse 37, this woman was obviously had free reign to come into the Pharisee's house and to do this. And yet the Pharisee is like a sinner. That, 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 uh, you know, what is this? Well, Luke 18. Luke 18. Luke 18. Very revealing. Especially when you run into someone who asks you uh, revolving door questions and don't want to hear the truth. Luke 18, 9 on to verse 14. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. You know, these Christians, it's like, this is when you need us. Look at us. We're not judging you. Come on. Scripture says, get out of here. You and the Lord got something to deal with. Go deal with it. Christianity, that's when you need to come into the church. That's when you need us. Why are they doing that? They boast, they boast to themselves. Look at how unjudgmental we are. Look at, we're demonstrating the, to them, the love, of, that's not the love of God. That's hatred. That's hatred. It's love. Look, you're in sin. You're, you're, you're messed up. You get out of here. 
Okay? You and the Lord got something to deal with. Go deal with it! Don't you bring your stuff around here. Get out! That's how it is with saints. And that hurts. But that is true love. It is, oh, oh you're, you're engaged in uh, sodomy or you're uh, uh, boasting that you're with a married woman or something like that. That's when you need us. No, that's when you need the true love. Get out. Why do they do that? Oh, they, they're righteous and despise others. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee, the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I boast in your accomplishments. Right away, I think of Jake the Jerk. Okay? You, you uh, call that little jerk on something, he going to rub in your face. Well, I got a book. I got this, this, this. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. Not worth the time trying to talk to somebody like that because they're their own little G-God and worship some, they worship a man, not the man. Okay? Anyway, I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. I, 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 me, me, me. Look at me. I'm not judging you. Look at how holy I am. <laughs> if he were, if this man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touches him, for she is a sinner. And the publican. We're back in uh, uh, Luke 18, verse 13. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. When you get involved in the merry-go-round that doesn't stop, well, you can't prove anything to me. And Well, no, you first proved to me. In order to stop it, I'm done. You're right. I can't prove anything to you. I can't prove anything. I can't prove anything to you. See, the spirits identify. Okay, he who is of God will hear. If you're searching for the Lord and you want to know the truth, okay, but otherwise, the free gracers, great example, they, they, they're their own God. They're their own salvation. Okay, they, they, you know, they're like, they're the Pharisee. I say myself because I just believe. That's Christianity for you. That's Christianity, man. Okay? And, and Mark 2. Mark 2. Verses 15 on to verse 17. See, when someone's their own God, when someone already has a predisposition thinking that they're right and don't want to know the truth. Mark 2, 15 on verse 17. And it came to pass that as Jesus sat at meat in his house, many publicans and sinners sat also together with Jesus and his disciples. For there were many, and they followed him. Jesus, Christian, Christianity will tell you, in effect, uh, that Steve Furkick guy, uh, I, I I watched that. I couldn't stomach that guy. That guy could pummel me to an oblivion. He's like a bodybuilder. <laughs> Warning! But that Steve Furkick guy or whatever his name is, it's like Jesus was hanging out with these guys. He was giving the testimony. He's God the Father. He was giving testimony to these people by him being there. And the publicans and sinners wanted to hear the truth. 
they knew that what the, they knew that they needed a physician. They wanted truth, kind of like the Bereans did. Kind of like, men and brethren, what shall we do? Kind of like the Philippian jailer who had godly sorrow, you filth. It's like, what must I do? They wanted truth. He wasn't hanging out with them, you know, God loves you. No. And see, that's exactly what Christianity tells you. And and usually when they're telling you that, they're, they're, they're Trinitarians. <laughs> and when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with publicans and sinners, they said unto his disciples, How is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician. Stop. Stop. Well, someone who's uh, a crazy doesn't need to hear it. That's not what he's talking about. Especially Christian. It's not what he's talking about. That's not the context. See, a free gracer who saved themselves by their own belief skip over brokenness and hide under the umbrella while we're all sinners and don't deal with it personally, which the Lord is all about. He's, he puts the finger on that one thing you lack. That's why they hate Romans 1, 2, and uh, chapter 3 up to verse 18. Okay? It's a personal thing. Salvation is personal. Okay? It's personal, which they don't like to address. And see... When someone has in their heart that they're their own God, that you're your own standard, and that because you had a cookie, because you had a thought, or because you're black, or you're there every day, the, uh, the building is open, or you speak and blah, 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 blah. They that are whole have no need of the physician. <laughs> because, you, because you are because you say you are. You think you are. You are, uh, what is it, um... I think I am, therefore I am. Uh, no. Have you ever tried to talk someone out of something? Uh, look at Paul. Look at Paul. He was going to Jerusalem when the Lord, you know, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit, on numerous occasions, like, hey, hey Paul, <laughs> don't go to Jerusalem. He went. Now, the Lord turned it out for the better, yes, but initially, the Lord's like, Paul, don't go to Jerusalem. He went. Paul had a pride problem. Paul wasn't going to be persuaded otherwise. The Hebrew of the Hebrews. <laughs> okay? They that are whole have no need of the physician. But they that are sick, publicans and sinners, they wanted truth because they knew they were sick. The Pharisees and this, uh, stuff like that, scribes and the Pharisees, Scribes who write the Bibles and the Pharisees put tradition above Scripture. Catholics, uh, commandments of men. Okay, just believe and receive. God loves you. Okay, they have no need of a physician because they are their own physician. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Well, repentance is going from unbelief to belief. And someone who wants to justify themselves. That's what they do. See, when you come up with, bring up the word repentance, which is a turning. Absolutely, amen. What are you turning from? The devils also believe and tremble. That's not what it is. You are your own God. That's what you tell yourself there, sweet pie. Which you Christians bolster up. Well, look at how we, you know, I give, the, I do. An atheist. And one, of, or, and one of these stupid college things that these guys do. Well, I want to talk to people. Is that wrong? Is that wrong? You know, going like, they, they like to bring it while Paul went to the marketplaces and talk. I do that. But do I put a megaphone before me and I try to draw a crowd? No. 
because it's on an individual thing. I've been asked before, it's like, oh, Brad, why don't you record that? I'm not going to record a personal encounter with someone to show you what I'm doing. That No. You know, that Ray Comfort does that. And don't you think for one second that the having the eye of a camera doesn't influence people. Well, no, it doesn't. Well, I forget that it's there. But see, you act upon it because you know it's there. Like I said, you know, what you see here is what you're going to get in person, boy. And there are several that can testify to that. Okay? This is me. Who you are seeing is me. You meet me out there, this is who you're going to meet. I wonder what that guy from Maine is actually like in person. I wonder what, uh, you know, <laughs> well, guys like Ken Helvin, and come on, he, he, I think Ken Helvin is a little bit more transparent than that. Um, he, he's, he, he is who he is, and he's not ashamed to let you know who he is, right? Okay? <laughs> okay? I wonder how many of these people, what are they like when the camera is off? Like a dear sister brought up, uh, what was it, yesterday? It's like, you know, the who you actually are is defined when it's the four walls, the ceiling, and the floor. And you guys, you Christians, can mask that with a facade, but sooner or later, scratch them, hit them with the sword, and see what happens. And self-justification Continued, prolonged self-justification is a sign to you. <laughs> and we, uh, the, you know, the Jews require a sign. Okay, we're not Jews. But re regurgitated, <laughs> recycled, revolving door justification that doesn't stop. They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And, and you know what? We, we got to go now. Go back to Luke 7. Go back to Luke 7. Picking up at verse 40. And the Lord, like he always does, puts his finger. That's why Christianity, number one, doesn't like the authorized version of the scriptures. You got this, some of these free grace of guys who claim they, they uh, like to, like, like. Preference has nothing to do with it. This is it. Preference has nothing to do with anything. This is God's perfect and errant given by inspiration word, the authorized version. Do I enjoy the authorized? Of course I do. This is what God wrote, dude. Of course. But see, that's irrelevant. This, this is, this is it. There is no nothing else. This is it. Preference has nothing to do with it. Okay, the word of God, the authorized version. Okay, preference is irrelevant. And Jesus answering said unto him, Shimon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And look at how he responds. And he saith, Master. <clears throat> Say on. He calls him master. But yet, he thought to himself, if he were a prophet, and got some brown on the nose. What a, what a two-faced scum. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. One owed him 500 pence and the other 50. 500 pence, 50. Which one's more? They that are whole need not the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous sinners to repentance. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave both, forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Shimon answered and said, I suppose. Stop. I suppose. I guess. Hmm. I suppose that he 
to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast judged rightly. I mean, come on, that, that's just common sense, right? I suppose. The same dude, if, if he were a prophet, and then, mwah, 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 which he was doing in the first place, Master, say on. Saints are getting this. You, you're getting this. And he turned to the woman and said unto Shimon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gave and the Lord's calling him right out. See, this is what the Lord, the Jesus who is, does. This is why Christianity doesn't want him. Because you want your cake and eat it too. Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet. But she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them clean with the hair, hairs of her head. Water versus tears. Same kind of substance, similar, yes. Point is, the personal thing there. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. Kiss the feet of the Lord. The kiss he's talking about, uh, Hebraic tradition, the mwah, mwah, on either cheek, as a greeting. And it had nothing to do with this, with that, this, nothing to do with whatever you perverts might think of. That was a greeting. They do that even today, uh, October 14th, uh, 2024. Yeah, the Hebraic Jews will do that amongst each other. Uh, the sons of Ishmael even do that kind of thing. Okay? It's a greeting. Nothing perverse about it. Okay, just, just to let you know, okay? But the point is, kissing on the cheek where, where the sick sinner kissed the feet. My head with oil, thou didst not anoint. But this woman hath anointed my feet with oil. Wouldn't even look up to heaven but smote upon his breast. Look up. What's up? The head. Where was she looking at? The feet. Okay, you, you lost people, you Christians. Are you getting this? Saints got this. Are you getting this? Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And look at verse 49. And they that sat at me with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? Good master, what must I do? This man, this man, if he were a prophet, good teacher. That's God the Father, boy. That, you know, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. That's the Mashiach. And he said unto the woman, I've got to, got to bring this up. Thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. Shut up. Faith. Save thee in the death, burial, resurrection. We covered this, I believe it was on Friday. They were not looking forward to the cross. They didn't know about the cross until it happened. What was the faith in? The Mashiach, son of David, God the Father. God the Father, okay? Okay, that's what the faith was in. That the Messiah... The Messiah, son of David, was there. It wasn't in the death, burial, and resurrection. Or else you have a blazing contradiction with Ephesians 3. Okay? It wasn't in the death, burial, and resurrection because they didn't know about it before until it happened. See, 
Who is this guy's problem? Luke 16. Master, say on. Invited them all over. Hey, see? See this intent, this one guy, Jesus? Hey, look at how righteous I am. Hey, even that, that harlot girl or that woman who's a sinner, I'm even going to let her in. Luke 16, 15. 14 and 15. And the Pharisees also who were covetous heard all these things and they derided him. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves for men. I do this. I do that. I had Jesus in my house. And I even sinning women and stuff like that. I, I'm, I thank you I'm not like other men are. And why? All their works they do to be seen of men. Matthew 23. All their works they do to be seen of men. Ken Helvin in his debates. I slaughtered them. Pete Ruckman made a fool of that Catholic. They brought it up. It becomes a source of pride. Now, I'm not against, you know, like I go to the square, uh, pass out tracks. I, I talk to people. But I don't, I'm preaching the gospel in a megaphone. Anybody quit? No, no. And you can't argue, I mean, you could. Was Paul doing that in the markets? Well, how are you supposed to get people's attention? You'd be amazed. And how things can work out like that. I mean, you go around, it's like, hey, you want a gospel track? Okay. But you don't go around blazing it for all. It, it's a personal thing. You know, it's, excuse me, ma'am. Uh, yeah, yeah, can I offer you a gospel track? No, thank you. Fine. Okay. Uh, I don't need one. Are you sure? I'm sure. Really? Want to talk about it? Not with a megaphone. Not in a thing where, you know, you'll have on like, well, what's wrong with that? There may be a Paul there. I'll give you that. I, 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 I have to. That, I mean, come on. But see, that's the exception. What's the rule? What happens with these, these guys with their baits, man? It's all about pride. Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts. Yes, he does. It's deceitful and desperately wicked. That hasn't changed today. The only way any of that will be different is when the Lord saves you, when you go the way of the cross, broken, contrite, and in fear of him. And you call upon him, and he saves you and seals you. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. You know, that dude who was doing these college things and their, their, their heart might be in the right place, but you know what? John 5, 44. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Verily, I tell you, that dude on the campuses with his videos getting hundreds of thousands of views, he's got his reward. praises of men. They love the praises of men more than the praises of God. Guy dude wasn't even using a Bible. Let alone the scriptures. I'm sure he you ask a guy like that, well the oldest and best. Like, Shut up, go away. Oldest and best. Oldest and best. Wow. Good thing that missed the scriptures. <laughs> you know, again, Brother Alexander B. Harley did that incredible analogy video <laughs> with the sponges okay check that out you know that 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 one right there you know one of these jesuit trained cemeterians see that 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 light a fire under that box right how can ye believe how can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from god only the after stream videos that that idiot Tom does. Oh! 
Have you looked in the, the, the don't, don't, but those of you who are aware, you look in the comment section of that stuff. After stream, it's all a, a gloating, you know, look at what we did. It's all pride. It's all pride. Matthew 6, 24. Matthew 6, 24. Matthew 6, 24. See, when you're your own God, no man can serve two masters. Solomon tried it and couldn't do it. Free gracers offer it to you, just believe and receive, so you can, you can go to heaven because you save yourself. No, you don't. Uh, and, but you can also live like a devil. No, you can't. Oh, yeah, sure you can. But it's going to cost you. <laughs> all things are lawful for you, but not all things are expedient. We, we, we won't even go there. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now, we equate mammon with money, but also mammon and th are things of the world fleshly things also intuited with that. How do you know? Next verse. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. One that you have right now. So are you to be flippant? No, no, do. And besides, this is the Sermon on the Mount, which is doctrine for the kingdom of heaven. But the point is, see, you got the free gracer saying to you, just believe and receive. Therefore you can have both. You can have, you can go to heaven, but also you can have all the filth of the earth that you want. You can cuss, you can watch your Hollywood movies. Hey, you can watch pornography because, hey, the more sin you do, the more grace you have. See, it's evil. It's satanic. The Lord right there in that verse specifically, it's either or. There is no option C. There is no gray area. You're either saved or you're lost. And see, Satan, ye have God said. Yea, hath God said, heaven or hell or purgatory. Don't get, don't get started on purgatory. There is no option C. It's an A and B equation. It's black or white. It's light or dark. It's simple. There is no gray. See, and when you mix white and black together, what do you get? You get gray. And that's exactly what Christianity is trying to give you. You can have the best of both worlds. That's not the gospel. Just believe and receive. You can go to heaven because you save yourself by your own belief. Or, and you can also live like a devil. <laughs> and see, someone who, you know, no room for the Lord in your heart. Someone who wants to hear that. I can go to heaven and still do what I want to do down here? I'll take that. I, I say, I'm say, and then there goes the pride. And the Lord tells us plainly, and there are other verses that clearly point this out. I just use this one for this. Um, <laughs> dude, there is no option C. There's no purgatory. There's no gray area. And see, the free gracer and those who are poisoned by that, by Christianity, they are serving mammon, even though they like to deceive themselves that they're, they're walking both lines, that they can have their cake and eat it too. Solomon tried that. It didn't work for him. Solomon. Read Ecclesiastes. It says diary, I believe. Okay? Uh, dude, Solomon, who had, who could, Solomon had enough wealth, he could buy a country, <laughs> okay? The Vatican does that nowadays, but he, he could have bought a country, okay? He had any, he could have anything his little heart wanted. Solomon, under the law, tried to work, walk that line and have his cake and eat it too. What did he say? Vanity of vanity, saith the preacher. All is vanity. This is exactly what Christianity is giving you. And it's it's interesting when atheists will say to some of the, and I've seen this, it's like, 
you, you, you're calling yourself a Christian, but you're doing worse than I do. Aren't you supposed to be like, you know, aren't you supposed to be at least, you know, and you, you idiot free gracers, you know, at least, you know, the facade. Aren't you at least, I've seen atheists bring that up. Okay. I've heard atheists, you know, in conversation. And it's like when you, and when you tell them as a saying, it's like, look, I can't prove anything to you. I'm not a Christian. God doesn't love you. That 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 flips their apple cart. Why? Because they're trained. What? Christianity. God loves you. God's not angry at you. Just believe and receive. For the most part. For the most part. You can't serve God and mammon. Either you will love the one and or hate the other. There's no gray area. You Christians think that you're having your cake and eat it too. That you can go to heaven and live like the devil without any consequence because you save yourself by your own belief and you got this scum, free gracer theology, antinomianism that comes around and justifies your sin and gives you a license. No, no, no. No. Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55, verses 1 on verse 11. Isaiah 55, verses 1 on to verse 11. Come. Oh. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat, Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. And we're, we're looking at this specifically for what? Mammon, which we equate to money. But see, it's also, you can weave into that things of the world. And what comes of the world, which has been given unto Satan for judgment's sake, can't save you. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, the bread of life, our Lord Jesus Christ, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat that which is good, and there is none good but God, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear and come unto me, hear, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God, and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Talking about our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Jesus Christ is coming flesh, the son of David. Seek ye Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. And again, again, proof positive that someone is lost when they dispute calling upon the name of the Lord. Okay? Uh, <laughs> when you've been See, they don't get it. When you've been broken... When you, uh, in that sinking submarine, see the water coming at you, you, the lesser, can't wait to call upon lost people dispute calling on the name of the Lord. What? They are their own gods. They've never been broken. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Sister, thank you when you sent to me, I think it was this. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. The thought of foolishness is sin. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. And Christianity loves to take this out of context. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Context, he's talking about Israel. Okay? For as the heaven are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Are not my ways equal and your ways unequal? 
You know, you read about that in Ezekiel, you know, which they like to go to. He has no uh, pleasure in the death of the uh, wicked. And you're right. He would have all men come to repentance. That is true. Yes, he wants everyone to be saved, but not everybody's going to be saved. Because God is not a God of coercion. Okay, not everyone going to be saved, okay? The Lord would love everyone to be saved. Yes, he would. But not everybody's going to be saved. And he doesn't force salvation on anyone, Calvinist. Okay? And because God will punish wickedness, his thoughts are higher than ours when man thinking we're righteous, that's when you need to come into the church. When you're in sin, that's when you need us. His thoughts are higher than ours. Our thoughts justify sin. He is a God of holiness. He is known by his judgments. His thoughts are higher than ours. And what do they like to bring? Well, he, he killed all the Ammonites. Not the Ammonites, but he killed all these people in the Old Testament because they thought differently than he did. No, he killed them, had them killed because they did that which is evil, like laying down with camels and the, the, the sodomy and uh, uh, worshiping Satan and all this nonsense and building towers to read because they're their own God. That's why. <laughs> because they did evil. How do you know what is evil? Scripture. God is the only one who truly knows what is good and what is evil. But hey, yea, hath God said, ye shall be as God. See? <laughs> Praise the Lord. His thoughts are higher than my thoughts. Because if my thoughts were the standard, I'd be dead. And I'd be in hell. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. But see, okay, the Lord, you know, how can you believe? That which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. You cannot serve God and mammon. His thoughts are higher than our, than our thoughts. Praise the Lord. But see, someone wants to justify themselves. What will they do, brethren? Hmm? What will they do? Luke 11, 53 and 54. Okay? Come on to the stream and defend your position. Come on! Dialogue with me. <laughs> I, I, I'd rather clean up dog piss. Okay? Than speak with devils. Okay? And I use that word in the appropriate context, by the way. Uh, Luke eleven fifty three 53 and 54. What do they do? You can't answer me. Well, you answer me. Run, run, go. Come on, defend your position. If you're not going to defend your position, then don't say anything. <laughs> don't, don't worry, pal. I'm not going to say nothing to you. Why? Why? Because you want mammon. You want the things of the world. You want white and black mixed together and come up with gray. You are your own standard. And when you are your own standard, what happens? And as he said these things unto them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to urge him vehemently and to provoke him to speak of many things, laying wait for him and seeking to catch something out of his mouth that they might accuse him. Come on, I, oh, dude, uh, they, don't, they don't do that anymore, pretty much. Some still do. It's like, why don't you go on a stream and defend your position? No! You're, you're afraid. Uh, go, go ahead, play with, 
play in the little sandbox that you have, little boy, little girl, little child. And hey, if you pick something out of the sand that looks round and brown, don't don't play with that, okay? <laughs> okay? I know that was a little crude, but you know, again, you will the baby because you know. <laughs> liar, liar, pants on fire? How old are you, 12? But that's the mentality. Childhood and youth are vanity. They never grow up because they want to live in their sin. They want to live in their sin. Matthew 16, 1 on 5. Matthew 16, 1 on 5. And then they do it at the the Pharisees also with the Sadducees came, and tempting, desired him that he would shew them a sign from heaven. The Jews require a sign. We walk by faith, not by sight. Unless you're a Pentecostal who's... <laughs> yeah. He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. It's obvious, right? Uh, red sky at night, sailors den delight. Red sky in the morning, sailors take warning or something like that. Okay? And in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. Red sky at night, sailors to the light. Red sky in the morning, sailors take warning. Right there. O oh, ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but ye cannot discern the sign of the times? Why is that? Because they're not of God. They are their own God. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. And there shall no sign be given unto it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed. And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. And the interesting thing about the bread there, go to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. John chapter 6, verses 26 unto 33. Now, Jesus fed 5,000 people, 2,000 and 5,000, right? And the bread, with like a couple loaves of bread, literally almost, and a few fishies, just nothing among thousands. The disciples were, defeat, were feeding the people by bread and fishies that were miraculously coming from nowhere, out of thin air. Okay? But see... Good master, what must I do? This, this man, if he were a prophet, good teacher, master, say on. When they can only see with the eyes of the flesh. And that's why, you know, the blind guy, son of David, have mercy on me. The Lord stopped. He didn't have physical eyes to see, but he could see that Jesus is the Messiah. But yet the rich young ruler saw only a meal ticket. Jesus answering answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat the loaves and were filled. Now, in salvation, many things accrue to you for your benefit. But are you going to the Lord because of a brokenness that was shown to you because you can't save yourself, you're not good? Or merely because it will benefit? See, and that's the thing. I didn't come to the Lord because uh, I was afraid of Him or uh, because of the love. You have to be broken before you can be fixed. There has to be a death before there can be a rebirth. Lord here, it's like, okay, you're only coming to me because of your full belly. Flesh, their God is their belly. You weren't coming to me because of who I actually am. Christianity. A license to, God forbid, turn the grace of our God into lasciviousness. <coughs> For you, buddy. <coughs> And your satanic Roman Catholic ecumenical doctrine. Labor not for the meat that which perisheth. 
which the Christian does to defend their sin all the time. But for that what meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Where are we reading to under this one? Uh, where are we? Uh, verse 33. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Now, oh, 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 hold on there, Spunky Bridges. He has fed, what, 5,000 people? Miraculously. I mean, undeniable miracle. But they came to him only because they had a full belly, not because they saw the miracles, okay? I say unto you, ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. Their God was their belly. Flesh was their belly. They couldn't see that. Why? Because of the, the, the flesh. He just fed 5,000 people miraculously, giving them pieces of bread and fishies where it was a, coming out of thin air out of the apostles' hands. And they couldn't see that. And then they asked, Then said they unto him, What shall we do? that we might work the works of God. Then Jesus, Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. It's not in, the belief wasn't in the death, burial, and resurrection. I already covered that. In that he is the promised Mashiach. They, they said, therefore, unto him, What sign shewest thou then? That we may see and believe thee. What dost thou work? Dude. 5,000 people. Miraculously just fed. He raised the dead. Turned water into wine. <laughs> what sign shewest thou then? You can't prove to me anything. You're right. You're right, I can't. Here's the proof that you need. The Lord will reveal himself to you through his word. Oh, he will. But do you want it? You only want to fill your belly so you can have your cake and eat it too, right? You can't prove anything to me. You're right, I can't. You're right, I can't. The Lord can through the scriptures. But do you want that? These guys were just part of a miracle. <laughs> what sign do you show us? Dude. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and again, with the, the, this, this debate thing that these Christians will do in front of people for the audience sake, it's entertainment, man. It's, dude, wasting your time. Go to the market. Sure, I do. In individual moments. Okay? Individual moments. Yes, a Paul could be there, but that's the exception, not the rule. Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which came down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Now, if you were to continue reading, this is where the Catholic comes in and wants you to believe that a cookie, that a Jesuit priest, goes abracadabra, woody woody, and turns it, okay? Um, you got to remember, look across the page, uh, verse 61 on verse 63. When Jesus knew in his, himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? 
It is the spirit. One that is being imparted, imparted because it's a lowercase s there. That quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. Okay? That's pretty simple. The words. The words that I speak unto you. They are spirit. And they are life. Lowercase s. God breathe. Given by inspiration. When that is imparted. The authorized version of scripture. That, like I said, that one dude, I don't know his name or whatever. But that one dude didn't even have a Bible. Didn't even have a Bible answering these people. But was boasting, look at me, how smart I am because I got all this stuff and I'm not even referencing a uh, Bible. A Bible, not the scriptures. Flesh is everything to him. Flesh is everything to the devil. Because he favoreth, savoreth the things that be of men, not of God. Okay? All right? John 10. Now, Keeping in mind what we just looked at, okay? These guys were part of the miraculous. They were part of it, dude. They were fed miraculously by the apostles, disciples, whatever, giving them bread and fish as it was appearing out of thin air, out of a little basket, and fed 5,000. But it's like, show us a sign. <laughs> dude. John 10. 22 under 30. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him, and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Tell us plainly. Speak in plain language that we can understand. Oh, they understood. The problem is they didn't want to hear it. I can't understand the authorized version. Yeah, you can. You just don't want to. You know, hey, hey, you got a you got high school diploma. Hey, you got a college degree, and you trip over thee, thou thine, ye. Give me a break, pal. Give me a break. Yeah, sure. You're the, I don't even have a good enough diploma. And you're the educated one, and you, you, Mr. Big Shot, stumble over thee, thine, thou, ye, thee, if. <laughs> yeah, if thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you. How did he do it? This is before he went to the council and stuff when they handed when they handed him over and whatnot, you know. It's before that. How do you do that? By demonstration. By the miracles, raising the dead, water the wine, feeding the five thousand, raising people from the dead, curing sickness, casting out devils. Who who does that? God? The Father? I told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all. God is, body, is spirit, soul. And body. We're made in the image of God. You're looking at my flesh. You can't see my spirit or my soul. Hence, and, re and remember, God became flesh. Flesh does not, never has, unless you're a Catholic, flesh never became God. The Holy Ghost, Spirit, God the Father, the Soul, the Word made flesh, body. That's what he means. 
My Father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. But he just said, out of my hand. Or my Father's hand. Verse 30. I and my Father are one. One God. Comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Oh, 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 you Trinitarian. Poison from Catholicism. You don't have the right God. Here's your Trinity. <laughs> and I'd say about 98% of Christianity is Trinitarian. Atheists can debunk that. Muslims, and they're colorful about it. Muslims can de debunk that. Okay? I and my father are one. And you look in John 8. See, Trinitarians, their Jesus is not the father. Their Jesus is not the father. And they get really upset at you when you say that Jesus is the Father. That's Catholic. John 8, 43 and 45. John 8, 43 and verse 45. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, I do this, I do that. You can't prove anything to me. You're right, I can't. He was a murderer from the beginning, the Garden of Eden, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Look at verse 23 and 24 of John 8. And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Meaning of the devil. Ye are from beneath, meaning of the devil. I am from above, heaven. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. But see, that's what Christianity does. Give you a worldly Christ who is not the Christ of Scripture. Because we have the world, what are we of the world, right? We of the world, what do we of the world want? We want a God who's not angry. We of the world want a God who loves you unconditionally. Yeah, we of the world. But saints, we are not of the world. We're in the world. We're not of the world. But we of the world, we want a Jesus who doesn't judge us, who doesn't get angry at us, who can love us in our sin, who loves our sin, is okay with it. Hey, love is love, right? I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. I am he. The Father. See, Trinitarians, they offer you a God who is not the Father. In, in their Jesus Christ. Who is the one in the middle. Uh, go to... John 14, 8 and 9. John 14, 8 and 9. Philip saith unto him, Lord, shew us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, shew us the Father? Jesus says the Father. Unless you believe, I am he, the Father. Oh, Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43. 10 unto 13. Ye are my witnesses, and they ain't the Jehos, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, 
and beside me there is no savior, savior. I have declared and have saved, and I have shewed, when there was no strange God among you. Therefore ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. Yea, for the day was, I am he. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work. And who shall let it? You know what? Go back to John 10. Go back to John 10. And look at verse 34. Or, excuse me, uh, 31 and on to verse 33. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. I and my father are one. For Abraham was, I am. He never, Jesus never said he was God. He said, I am. I am he. He is the father. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I shewed unto you from my Father. For which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because thou, that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Okay, do it! They asked him, If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. I and my Father are one. He told them, again, what did they do? They went to kill him. They didn't want the truth. We of the world, we want a God who placates us in our depravity. We want a Jesus who is this soft, sugary, saccharine, sweet, splendid, sweet, diabetic, effeminate God who loves you unconditionally. It's not the God who is. It's not the God who is. But see, that's the God we of the world want. But that's not the God who is. And see, now go to Mark 14. Mark 14. Jesus proved who he was, the Father, the Messiah, the Mashiach, many a time. But they didn't want the truth. You can't prove anything to us. You're right, because you don't want it. Mark uh, 14, 60 and verse 65. And the high, now Jesus was brought before the council here. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Answerest thou not? Answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witness against thee? Hold your place, Isaiah 53. He didn't say anything. Why? Because it wouldn't help. It wouldn't work. It, was wa it would be a waste of time. There are people out there, brethren, who will ask you questions. It's a waste of time to answer them. Especially if they don't want to hear it. For example, Dave Murphy asking questions. It's a waste of time to answer his questions. Why? He doesn't want the truth. He just wants to be disputatious. But know about him. He doesn't want it in the first place and he's admitted it. So go away. But Isaiah 53, 700 verse 9. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb, he openeth not his mouth. Dumb means not speaking, not being able to speak or being quiet. And the high priest stood in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witness against thee? Back in Isaiah 53, verse 8, He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For, for the transgression of my people he was stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked. And with the rich in his death. Because he had not done no violence. Neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yeah, Jesus never sinned. Back in Mark 14, verse 61. But he held his peace. 
and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him, and said unto him, Art thou the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. He did. And they went to kill him. You can't answer me. Or give me an answer. Tell, answer my question. You answer their question, they still don't want it. And Jesus right here. And Jesus said, I am. For Abraham was, I am. I am. And ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Art thou the Christ? <laughs> Tell us. I am. What did they do? Then the high priest rent his clothes and saith, what need we any further witness? Ye have heard the blasphemy. What think ye? And they all condemned him to be guilty of death. You know, be careful what you ask because you'll get the truth, especially from the scriptures. And if you don't want to hear the truth, and some began to spit on him, and to cover his face, and to buffet him, and to say unto him, Prophesy. And the servants did strike him with the palms of their hands. Mock the Father. People out there who ask you questions, they don't want to hear it. And when you give them the truth, they'll go to kill the messenger. Mark, Matthew 27. Matthew 27. Verses 39 on to verse 44. Christ crucified. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads, and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests, mocking him with the scribes and elders, said, He saved others. He himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. How many of you saints is like, if you prove to me your God is real, then I'll believe. Oh, yeah? Well, you wouldn't. What would have happened if the Lord Jesus Christ came down? You know what would have happened. Any You saints know what would have happened. You Christians, you lost. If the Lord would have... We already saw what they would have done to Jesus if they had opportunity. They took up stones to kill him. They spit in his face. Why? Because he called himself the Father. He is the Father. He told them, if you're the Christ, tell us plainly. He tells them, and what do they do? They try to kill him. What would have happened? If he's like, okay, come down, they, still, they would have tried to kill them. They would have tried to kill him. If you can prove to me that your God is real, I'll believe. No, you won't. No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. See, because... You are your own God. You are already convinced that uh, nobody can prove anything to you otherwise. So that's kind of like a trick. Trick question. If you, I, I mean, if you would run into that. And I brought this up to people before. Face to face. And of course, to react. And I told them they were going to do it. It's like, you wouldn't believe. If I could, if I, if I, if I, could prove to you that my God is real. You wouldn't believe it anyway. You wouldn't believe it anyway. And one guy, I, I said that, that, and you know what? You're going to throw at me? Well, you are. You can't because you're inadequate. You're afraid of na 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 na. And he did that exact same thing in front of my face. You can't prove to me. You're right, I can't. 
And see, the God who is doesn't want you to be like that. But the God of Christianity, the God of Christianity, which is generally one God in three persons, okay? Uh, the God of Christianity, hey, we want this. Christ is this. This. If he would have come down off that cross, they would have killed him. They didn't want it. They didn't want the truth. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now. If he will have him, for he said, I am the Son of God. The thieves also, which were crucified with him, cast the same in his teeth. If he would have come down off the cross, they would have killed him. Unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are undefiled and believing, nothing is pure. You're right. I can't prove to you, lost person, atheist, I can't prove to you a thing. God can, through the scriptures, absolutely. But see, you've already, you're in your heart, you are your own God. And when you are your own God, there's no room for the God who is. You want a track? No. You want to reason together? You and I? No. Okay. You know, like I said, like we said on Friday, there are people I wish would be saved. I, I really do. There are uh, quite a few people I'd love to see our brethren and sisters. But that's not up to us. Brethren, we can't convince anybody. I can't prove to you anything. It's not my calling. That's not my duty. My thing, brother, here you go. Now you want to talk about what's in here? Let's talk, okay? And the spirit that is in me, the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, the Holy Ghost, you know, the Lord is that spirit, will speak to you through his word, through the foolishness of what you call, foolish as what you call lost person, Christian preaching. I can't prove anything to you. You're right. God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ can. Through what? Is perfect and errant, given by inspiration word, the authorized version. If you don't want to hear that, then hey. Roll up another one, buddy. God loves you. Saints, remember this. Because I, I know, dude. Like I said, there are a lot of people I'd love to see saved. But you can't force it. If God, if God don't force salvation on anybody, who are we to? Especially, like, like I said, Dave Murphy, great example. He said in a video, he doesn't want to. And he even said, yeah, you're right, I want my sin. I think that's almost verbatim to what he said. Okay. Leave a guy like that alone. You're wasting your time. There might be a Paul there. Okay, fine. But that's the exception. Not the rule. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching this if you do. Please, brethren, keep, keep your servant in prayer. Keep us in prayer. And thank you. I love you. Lord willing, we will see you in the next video whenever that may be. Bye-bye.